Deadpool is one of the most popular characters that Marvel has, and it is due to this popularity that he has found himself with enough alternates to rival his frenemy Wolverine. In fact, Deadpool has so many alternates that he even was forced to take some of them down. Killing some of them off in Deadpool kills Deadpool. After all, one Wade Wilson is crazy enough in the world of Marvel, right? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the more evil, more depressing, or just more insane alternates from the Marvel multiverse as we count down the top 10 dark alternate versions of Deadpool. And be sure to stick around to the end of this list where we will have some bonus content coming your way in the form of comment responses. Alright, let's get counting. Number 10. Deadpool Dinosaur Deadpool Dinosaur is a version of Deadpool that is a T-Rex. The main thing that indicates his Deadpool-ness is that he's wearing a Deadpool mask and is part of the Evil Deadpool Corps. The Evil Deadpool Corps are a group of villainous Deadpools originally led by an alternate Deadpool, Dreadpool. They aim to eliminate all Deadpools across the multiverse. Deadpool works to stop them and annihilate this villainous group in the story Deadpool Kills Deadpool with the help of his own good team of Deadpools, known simply as the Deadpool Corps. Deadpool Dinosaur is accompanied by his own moon boy who looks a lot like Logan in the face if I'm being honest. Is this just me noticing this? This version of moon boy also fights from Deadpool Dinosaur's saddle with a big gun. The two are basically an alternate version of moon boy and devil dinosaur with of course some Deadpool mixed in there. Number 9. Deadpool This version of Deadpool is basically a combination of former evil AIM leader MODOK and Deadpool himself. One can assume he has the brilliant mind of MODOK but also has the brilliant fighting skills of Deadpool, even with his tiny disproportionate arms. Not only does Deadpool seem to fight with swords, but he also has two turret firearms on his head. While MODOK stands for mental organism designed only for killing, Deadpool supposedly stands for a destructive engine of assassination despite Panpygoptosis obsessed with opponent liquidation. Number 8. Venom Pool In a story that has continued through various what if issues, we get to meet Venom Pool. Venom Pool is an alternate version of Deadpool from the alternate Earth of 90211. Here Deadpool ends up becoming bonded with the Venom symbiote during his time with the Beyonder, following a run in with Peter Parker who was bonded with the symbiote at the time. The symbiote leaves a defeated Peter Parker for Deadpool and bonds with him. Later on in his life, this is a path that leads Deadpool to end up killing all the heroes of his universe whom he does not find attractive. He does let the attractive ones live. I guess that's that's something, I guess. Following a therapy session with Doc Samson, who this version of Deadpool also promptly kills thereafter, he realizes he needed to be true to who he was. This allowed Venompool to accept that who he was was a massive jerk, and prompted him to use a weapon called the Retcon Expungifier to wipe out the entire universe. Basically, he's in the running for being the biggest jerk of all the Deadpool alternates. Number 7. Cesspool We don't know that much about Cesspool. Like many of the darkest alternates of Deadpool, Cesspool was part of the evil Deadpool core. What we do know of him is that he has a terrifying appearance and mutation. He is completely covered in mouths with a razor sharp teeth and uses these to try and devour his opponents. Yipes. This is like something straight out of a horror movie. Number 6. Galactipool This alternate version of Deadpool was too dark for even main continuity Deadpool himself. Galactipool shows up just as we thought the fight was coming to a close between the Deadpool core and the evil Deadpool core. Galactipool is a combination of Galactus and Deadpool and Wade wondered where in the heck the evil Deadpool core even found an alternate like this Galactus pool. Fortunately, despite him likely having I guess some kind of intense cosmic power, alternate Deadpool Lady Deadpool manages to defeat Galactipool. Galactipool using the Deadpool core ship, B. Arthur. Sadly, this was the end of B. Rest in peace, B. Number 5. Wolverine Pool What happens when you take Deadpool and Wolverine and mix them together? You get Wolverine Pool. Wolverine Pool comes from the alternate Earth of 1946. Wolverine Pool is the ultimate Weapon X program weapon. He is a version of Wade Wilson who had adamantium bonded to his skeleton. He belonged to the evil Deadpool core and was killed during a fight with the non-evil Deadpool core. It is assumed that he of course has a healing factor, but not one strong enough to regenerate himself when reduced to just a skeleton. And likely a healing factor that was weaker than both the main continuity Wolverine and the main continuity Deadpool. 
Number four, Red Tool. Red Tool is actually not from an alternate Marvel universe, but it's actually from DC Comics. Oddly enough, while Marvel's Deadpool was created by Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nicea to be a parody of DC's Deathstroke, DC then decided to themselves parody Marvel's own parody of their character, creating Red Tool, who is a parody of Deadpool. He's a parody of a parody. Still, just because we are stuck in a weird perpetuation of parody doesn't mean that Red Tool has to be a super light and fun character. Although he kind of is that too. Red Tool is dark in the fact that he only fights with tools, including power tools, making his physical conflicts also appear a lot more gruesome than his Marvel counterpart. And he doesn't have a healing factor, instead he just can't feel pain, due to having a part of his brain removed. Which also makes him somehow even more disturbing of a character than Marvel's Deadpool. Pretty impressive actually. Good job DC. Number 3, Headpool. Headpool is the version of Deadpool from the Marvel Zombieverse of Earth 2149. He is aptly named Headpool because in the end, that is all that's left of him, a head. But a head who is still very much alive, that is, and would still very much like to eat you. This version of Deadpool was also not confined to just existing in the alternate Earth of Earth 2149. He ended up making his way to Earth 616 while he still had most of his full body actually. He ended up making his way to Earth 616 while he still had mostly his full body actually. He was thought to have been completely decimated during a fight there but it turns out he survived but simply had lost the rest of his body and was now just ahead. Number 2, Dreadpool. One of the darkest alternates around, Dreadpool is the version of Deadpool who appeared in Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. He is from the alternate Earth of 12101, where he was driven even more insane than he already is. A therapist known as Dr. Benjamin Brighton attempted to brainwash Deadpool so he might use him for his own means. However, this failed, and instead, ridded Deadpool of his standard inner voices, replacing them with a single voice. This voice in his head seemed fully aware that nothing in the Marvel Universe was actually real, and encouraged Deadpool to free everyone from this fictional prison or fictional reality by killing them all off, which Deadpool then proceeded to do. Basically, Dreadpool is from Deadpool's darkest timeline. Number 1, Evil Deadpool. Evil Deadpool is an alternate Deadpool from the main reality of Earth 616. He is sort of a Franken version of Deadpool, who was created by the deranged and psychotic Dr. Ella Whitby. Ella Whitby accidentally helped to create him from storing bits and pieces of Deadpool's body, which had been lost throughout his life while he fought. She collected these because she was obsessed with Deadpool, she was also madly in love with Wade. Though they were stored in her fridge, they were likely part of her shrine of collectibles of Deadpool. In the end, Deadpool found these parts in her fridge and tossed them out. As they thought in the garbage bag he disposed of them in, they came to life and rejoined together to create Evil Deadpool. A version of Deadpool that is evil and just an all around complete jerk for the sake of being one, whose fighting skills rival the real Deadpool and who also has a backwards arm, which actually proves to be surprisingly useful in fights for him. Thank you so much for watching Nerd Squad, who are some of your favorite Deadpool alternates? Which alternates do you think are the darkest? Who do you love more, Deadpool or Wolverine? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, Top 10 Darkest Alternate Versions of the Joker, Part 2. Sunstar comments, if they ever release the extended version of Ayer's Suicide Squad, I'd like to see all the scenes with Jared Leto that were cut. All that method acting, let's see the final product. I would also be interested in checking that out. Jared Leto might be a lot of things, but I do think he is an accomplished actor, and it could be very interesting. And with the Snyder Cut of Justice League coming our way, if it does well, who knows, maybe we could see an extended cut of Suicide Squad or maybe a recut from Ayer who has spoken about some of his regrets when it comes to his work on that film. Trex Advent asks, what would happen if we saw these dark alternate versions of the Joker on the big screen or in TV shows? Batman Who Laughs is actually so popular, we could likely see that alternate of both Batman and the Joker. But I also feel like that would be so crazy, like a live action Batman Who Laughs. I'm not sure if the world is ready for that. Are you nerds ready for that? Bruce Banner, the scientist who was exposed to extreme amounts of gamma radiation that altered his DNA structure due to gamma rays and trauma passed down by his father that caused him to become the giant green monster of incredible power known as the Hulk whenever he gets angry. This is a pretty grim origin story, I won't lie, but did you know that there are other Hulks out there with equally dark and even darker pasts? What is going on all of you nerdy folk out there? My name is Jack and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. You've probably already guessed it, but today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite heroes out there, the Hulk. But not our regular old Earth 616 Bruce Banner. Nope. We're going to be taking a look at some of the darkest versions of the Hulk out there in terms of story and overall personality that are scattered throughout the Marvel Universe. Let's get into it, shall we? 
Number 10, Bruce Banner, Earth 12,091. Now, not a whole lot is known about this alternate universe, but they do have a pretty crazy looking Hulk nonetheless. In this reality, Bruce Banner was mutated into the Hulk by undergoing some gamma radiation experimentation, so pretty standard so far, but his appearance is vastly different than the Hulk that we're familiar with. This Hulk is like an electric green color and is a bit more risque because he doesn't wear any clothes, which is okay, I guess, because he's got kind of, you know, Ken doll in it, if you know what I mean. Not to mention that he has four absolutely massive arms, effectively making him twice as strong as any other Hulk. After this transformation, he gained the reputation for destroying spaceships, and any attempts to stop him by Thunderbolt Ross were always thwarted. He attacked the hideout of Barracuda when the Punisher tried to gain information about the six-fingered hand, and he killed a decent amount of the mercenaries hired to kill the Punisher, but was enraged by the leader's sonic device. The Punisher managed to escape before the Hulk could kill him, which you can assume he could have done very easily. Check out this monstrous Hulk for yourself in his first appearance in 2012 Space Punisher number 2. Number 9, Skulk. Hailing from Earth 9602, the Amalgam Universe, Bruce Banner was a scientist experimenting with radiation, and one day an experiment he was working on went horribly wrong and fused him with the elemental entity known as Solomon Grundy, and he became known as the Skulk. With the powers of the Hulk and Solomon Grundy combined, you can probably figure out for yourself why this would be pretty scary. After a confrontation with Doctor Strange Fate, Strange Fate showed Skulk that he could keep the Skulk in his human form with the use of magic. The Skulk agreed to work as an agent for Doctor Strange Fate in return for Strange Strange Fate keeping Skulk in the form of Bruce Banner for most of the time. This version of the Hulk is a, actually a rather gentle soul because upon finding access, Bruce actually tried to have a conversation with him rather than immediately jumping into battle because he thought that Axis seemed like a really lost and lonely child in the world. This didn't last for long though because it did get to the point where he transformed into the Skulk and attacked him with just plain old brute force. Skip ahead a little bit to a mysterious villain attacking the Amalgam Earth city by city and Lobo the Duck awoke in the ruins of Manhattan and found himself as the last remaining survivor among the heroes. Now the Skulk's body was never actually found among the other heroes but it can be assumed that he is no longer living. Check out this character for yourself starting with their first appearance in 1996's Doctor Strange Fate, number one. Number eight, The Incredible Thing. In an alternate reality, Earth 295 to be exact, Bruce Banner never actually became the Hulk and mutants rule the world. In an effort to combat them, Bruce under the order of Thaddeus Ross is tasked with creating an army of super soldiers, however all of his efforts fail. Banner moves to Europe not too long after and becomes a member of the Human High Council, the ruling body of the surviving human population. Oddly enough, Banner longs to become a mutant in order to escape being a second class citizen and caving into the moral low ground, Banner sold himself to one of the horsemen of the apocalypse in order to experiment on mutants and eventually himself. The result of the experiment was The Thing, a grey Hulk very that Banner could revert between at will. Ben Grimm and Sue Storm were the first to encounter the Thing, and Sue shot him in the side of the head. The Thing fled and turned back into Banner, but neither Sue nor Ben connected the two events together. Fast forward a little bit to when Bruce alongside Tony Stark is escaping the Earth's orbit, and we see humanity under fire from a bunch of missiles. They were able to destroy all except for one, an adamantium bomb that Bruce had invented himself. So, as the Thing, he jumped out of the spacecraft and diverted the bomb so that no one would have to die from it. Forcibly reverting back to his human form, he fell down to Earth and was captured by Apocalypse. After an identified period of time, he revolts against the Alphas and Apocalypse, but sadly this ended in his death. Check out this Bruce Banner for yourself in 1995's X-Universe number one. Number seven, Infernal Hulk. Are you familiar with Earth 11,638? It is an alternate universe that is seemingly a utopia because Spider-Man's loved ones are still alive and Bruce, Bruce Banner finally separated from the Hulk and Wade Wilson never had to become Deadpool. However, he did end up becoming the villain Deathmask, but we'll just sort of, you know, gloss over that one. <laughs> After Bruce Banner became Dr. Banner, the Sorcerer Supreme of this universe, he separated himself from the Hulk and banished him to Hell, where he became the Infernal Hulk. When the Bruce Banner of Earth 616 traveled to this universe with Spider-Man and Deadpool, the Infernal Hulk was able to get free from Hell by trading places with the Hulk persona of Earth 616's Banner. He immediately went after Bruce, who was saved by Spider-Man and Deadpool. Together with his counterpart, Spider-Man and Deadpool, the Sorcerer Supreme Banner came up with a plan to defeat the Infernal Hulk once and for all by reversing the banishing spell and then snapping Bruce's neck before the Infernal Hulk could take control of his body. Check out this devilish Hulk for yourself in their first appearance in 2011's Deadpool Annual Number 1. 
Number 6, John Eisenhart. On Earth 928, the alternate Earth that is set in 2099, and it is a vastly different world than we are familiar with because the age of the heroes has ended and much of the world is run by violent and evil companies. Head over to Los Angeles and we meet John Eisenhart, the Hulk of 2099. John gained his Hulk-like abilities from the Knights of Banner, a cult that worshipped the original Hulk, who wanted nothing more than to create a new Hulk. Their gamma gun accidentally fired and hit John, and he was transformed into a 12-foot-tall gamma beast with razor-sharp claws and fangs, a long tongue, and massive muscles. Hulk 2099 dedicated himself to defending the people from monsters like Draco and became a leader in a rebellion against them. After President Victor Von Doom's takeover of America, John stole a Gamma device from one of Doom's henchmen in order to keep it from Doom himself. Now this device was similar to the one that granted John the ability to transform into his Hulk-like form in the first place. Draco threatened John with a massive bomb placed directly on the city's fault line if he didn't turn the Gamma device over to him. In the ensuing battle, the bomb detonated and triggered a massive earthquake, and the earthquake set off the Gamma device that resulted in a massive explosion laying waste to the city. John emerged from the rubble, mutated even more so by the radiation emitted from the device. His mutation eventually did stabilize and he returned to his original form just prior to S.H.I.E.L.D. agents arriving in the region. While battling them, John seemed to perish and, well, that's the last that we've seen of him. Give his story a read for yourself in 1993's 2099 Unlimited number 1. Number 5, Bruce Banner, Earth 9591. In the Marvel Universe, scientific accidents tend to lead to fabulous powers. However, in the real world, a scientific accident typically leads to serious injury or even death. After all, if a regular person were caught in the explosion of a gamma bomb, they definitely wouldn't gain green skin and super strength. Odds are they would just get probably really sick and die. With that in mind, let's meet Bruce Banner from the miniseries Ruins. Written by Warren Ellis, Ruins is a dystopian twist on the Marvel Universe, where everything that can and does go wrong goes wrong. In this twist on the classic origin story, Rick Jones is a morphine addict that wandered into the testing site of a gamma bomb. The heroic Bruce Banner rushes to save him and is caught in the blast of the bomb, but instead of becoming the Jade Giant, Bruce Banner is consumed with a mess of green tumors which tear Banner apart from the inside out. Much like the Peter Parker of this universe, Banner is currently believed to be held captive by the CIA for research purposes. Give the storyline a read for yourself in 1995's Ruins number 1. It answers a lot of questions that I personally didn't know I wanted the answers to. Number 4, Hulk Earth 2081. After a war which ended in a violent nuclear holocaust that wiped out all life on Earth, wanted to get away from the few remaining survivors, would return to the Gamma Cave in New Mexico, where he'd seal himself off with a boulder. Many years later, Bruce would free himself from his imprisonment by a recorder, who was sent to record the demise of humanity at the request of a number of races. Though Bruce at first assumed they wanted to learn from humanity's mistakes, the recorder then informed him that they just wanted to make sure that they were all actually dead. Though Bruce at first refused to believe that everyone was dead, asking if it was some kind of joke, he soon came to accept it. He would then ask the recorder if he was going to kill him as well, to, you know, be sure. And the recorder then asked Bruce if he wanted to die, to which Bruce then responded, no, why, why would I want that? Bruce spent the next several years wandering across the ruins of the old cities trying to remember what he could of the old world. Later, Bruce suffered a painful heart attack and how much his punishment resembles that of Prometheus, the last titan, you know, condemned to stay forever alive even while animals devoured him. As he died, the Hulk's persona arose in his mind. Banner would plead with the Hulk, begging him to simply let go of his conflicts, claiming that they were going to a paradise where all their dead friends were, where they could be happy. Hulk threw away his suggestion, thinking it was a trick, and because in his eyes, friends had always betrayed him. With Banner completely gone, the Hulk was left completely alone in an empty world. Check out this one-shot storyline in 2002's Incredible Hulk, The End. Number three, Zombie Hulk. That's right, it's Jack talking about the zombie verse once again, my big favorite. In the world of Marvel Zombies, the Hulk is the hungriest one there is. After an unnamed hero driven by the hunger crashes on Earth and infects the Avengers with a zombie virus, the world spirals into a zombie apocalypse. Once valiant heroes resort to stomach-churning acts to fulfill their craving for human flesh, and the world becomes a battle for the strongest for scarce resources. A roaming band of zombies composed of, or I guess, I guess decomposed since they're zombies, of former heroes such as Spider-Man and Wolverine kill and eat their way across the planet with a zombified Hulk serving as the twisted team's muscle. The group eventually cross paths with the Silver Surfer who is subsequently brutally killed by the Hulk and eaten by the group, imbuing the zombies with the cosmic power, allowing the former heroes to take to the stars to eat their way across the galaxy. 40 years later, Hulk returns to the Earth to find a colony of human survivors in New York known as New Wakanda. After Giant Man declared a plan to create a breeding program to have food for eternity, Spider-Man and Luke Cage rebelled and fought Tony and the others. A force field was activated, protecting Black Panther's stronghold and the survivors, but sealed Gladiator and an unconscious Bruce Banner inside and cut Luke Cage in half. 
Hulk eventually escapes, and after eating Reynolds, Hulk transformed back into Bruce and voluntarily was eaten by the zombie so that he could cause no more damage to anyone. You all already know that this is one of my favorite universes, so check out Zombie Hulk for yourself, starting with his first appearance in Marvel Zombies Dead Days, number one. Number two, Maestro. While the Hulk has traditionally served as a tragic anti-hero, the supervillain known as the Maestro serves as a reminder that the Hulk is really only one bad day away from becoming the most dangerous foe mankind has ever encountered. This alternate future version of the Hulk hails from a Earth ravaged by nuclear war. Driven mad by the death of his friends and from continued exposure to radiation, the Hulk christens himself the Maestro and appoints himself the ruler of this war-torn dystopia. Retaining the intelligence of Bruce Banner, but with the enhanced strength brought on from the radiation, the Maestro rules unopposed, splitting his time between torturing those who have crossed him and admiring his trophy room filled with the weapons and costumes of his fallen comrades. When the modern day Hulk is sent forward in time, he ends up clashing with his future self, eventually triumphing over the cocky maestro. While the maestro hails from a possible future, the Hulk lives in constant fear that one bad move could put him on the path to becoming this tyrannical ruler. Fast forward through some pretty cool events that you should definitely read for yourself, and we see the maestro go up against Logan, who unsheathed his claws and just decapitates him. Give the story a read for yourself, starting with 2017's Old Man Logan, Volume 2, Number 25. And number one, Pappy Banner. This version makes me so uncomfortable, it's not even funny. So similar to his 616 counterpart, Bruce Banner of Earth 21,923 began as a hero, or, you know, as much of a hero that the Hulk can be. No one really knows how or why or when, but Bruce Banner had a very drastic shift in personality and became a villain, many believing it to be probably because of the prolonged exposure to radiation. When the villains took over in this alternate world, Banner joined in on the hero slaughter, eliminating Thor and so many others. Banner later took over a large portion of California and Nevada as his own and named it Hulkland. He also made the decision to, uh, mate with his first cousin She-Hulk and sired a group of inbred Hulks called the Hulk Gang. Through intimidation alone, they forced people living there to pay rent or face having their property taken and even death. One of the people that was extorted was Logan, who had become a pacifist at the time. Then one day, the Hulk Gang killed Logan's family, causing him to abandon his pacifist beliefs. And in anger, Logan killed almost the entire Hulk Gang and its leader, Pappy Banner. Understand why this Hulk makes me so uncomfortable? If you feel like you've got it in you, check out Pappy Banner for yourself in this first appearance in 2015's Old Man Logan number four. What's going on all you nerdy folk out there? My name is Jack and today we're gonna be taking a look at some dark alternate versions of Spider-Man and don't worry when I say dark I'm not referring to Tobey Maguire with emo bangs shooting finger guns and you know awkwardly dancing in Spider-Man 3. I'm actually talking about Spider-Man in the comics that have a much darker tone, backstory, or all-around persona compared to the friendly webhead from Earth 616 we're all familiar with. Without further ado, let's get into it. Number 10, Symbiote Spider-Man. Obviously, we have to start off this list with a classic. Introduced in 1989's What If, Volume 2, Number 4, we're given a glimpse into the life of Earth 1089's Peter Parker after his suit bonded with the Venom symbiote. In this reality, the symbiote couldn't be removed from Peter Parker, even though the Fantastic Four and other heroes tried using a combination of magic and science. It ended up taking over Peter's mind and body, feeding off his adrenaline, causing him to age at a very rapid rate. Once his body couldn't sustain the symbiote any longer, it used him to possess superheroes like Hulk and even caused the death of a few others. Free from the symbiote's control, it's then revealed that Peter Parker has now aged to 85 with not a whole lot of time left. He was later found dead by Mr. Fantastic, surrounded by research on how to kill the symbiote that he was once bonded to. Although it was out of his control, symbiote Spider-Man was considered even worse than Venom, one of the most sadistic villains in the Marvel Universe. And Unfortunately, he never really got that redemption. Number 9, Peter Parker, Earth 9591. Now, we're all familiar with the origin story of Peter Parker. You know, spider bite leads to powers, leads to the birth of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But have you ever wondered what it would look like if things took a bit of a different turn after that spider bite? Well, wonder no longer because the 1995's Ruin Number 2 were actually introduced to a different Peter Parker who isn't so lucky. After being bitten by the radioactive spider, Peter develops a total of zero powers and is instead infected with a mutant virus that ultimately leads to his death. This Earth never gets the chance to meet the hero Spider-Man, and instead they're given a rash and scar-covered Peter Parker who was forced to live the remainder of his life in quarantine so he wouldn't infect anyone else. You know, I always wondered what would happen like realistically after that spider bite, but man, I really didn't think it would be that dark. Number 8, Ghost Spider. Now, this is one of my favorite costumes in the Spider-Man PS4 game, so you know I had to add it to the list. On Earth 11,638, Peter's Uncle Ben wasn't ever murdered and actually helped him hone his skills as the Amazing Spider. 
Despite this, he doesn't always use his abilities and intellect for good, and thanks to the resources from his lab, Parker Technologies, the Amazing Spider found a way to bring over other Spider-Men from different universes and absorb their powers. After bringing Earth-616 Peter Parker into his universe, the Spider is convinced by him that what he's been doing isn't heroic at all. Then, when Ben is about to absorb Earth-616 Peter's powers, we see the Spider stand in the way and instead had his powers absorbed, putting his body into a comatose state and trapping his spirit in hell. Following the Sorcerer Supreme's fight with the Infernal Hulk, we see Peter given a second chance at life after he was infused with the spirits and powers of the Repentant Damned. Now possessing powers similar to Ghost Rider along with his Spidey powers, he wakes from his coma as the Ghost Spider and uses his second chance to correct some of the mistakes he's made already. Check him out in his first appearance in 2011's Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 38. Number 7, Superior Spider-Man. Following an insane life that deserves a read if you're not familiar with it already, Otto Octavius transplanted his mind into the body of Peter Parker, leaving Peter in his body. Still retaining Peter's memories, he was able to trick all of Peter's loved ones into thinking nothing was wrong. Otto believed that he could be a better Spider-Man and, following the death of Peter Parker, took up the role as the superior Spider-Man, upgrading the spider suit to better fit his needs. Many battles ensued, and then it's revealed along the way that Peter's consciousness still lived on inside his body, and after the Goblin King kidnapped Anna Maria, Otto's love interest while in Peter's body, Otto begins to hesitate to save others as he has a chance to save her and doubts he can save everyone without having time to plan. Peter's consciousness pushes him to save the child who is also in danger at the same time and Otto realizes that Peter is more deserving of the role of Spider-Man and completely erases his consciousness so that Peter can take control of his body once more and save everyone. He sacrificed himself for the girl he loved and the man he hated for the greater good and that just goes to show you that even if you start off as a villain, you can change and become a hero. Now there's a lot more to the story that I had to gloss over or skip so I highly recommend you check out the story for yourself, starting with The Amazing Spider-Man, number 697. Number 6, Doppelganger. The evil, pretty much mindless duplicate of Spider-Man from Earth-616, this version of Spider-Man was created by Magus during the Infinity War. Although he was killed during the Infinity War, this six-armed Spidey clone was later revived by the Demogoblin, becoming its pet for a while. Doppelganger appears a few more times after the aftermath of the Infinity War, teaming up with Carnage, Shriek, Carrion, and the Demogoblin during the infamous Maximum Carnage killing spree, and then is later seen as part of the Spider Army to help defeat Morlin and the other Inheritors. Unfortunately for him, after many adventures, the Doppelganger was eventually captured and imprisoned in the rebuilt Ravencroft. Possessing many of the same powers as the original Spider-Man, what really sets Doppelganger apart is his raw strength. Being able to lift up to 25 tons as opposed to the normal 10 that most other Spider Heroes can lift. Why not check him out for yourself in Infinity War number 1? Number 5, Pestilence. In 2005's Cable and Deadpool number 15, we see Deadpool dropped in Earth 5701, while on a search for Cable where the supervillain Apocalypse has conquered New York and then changed four superheroes into his horsemen, one being the Spider-Man of this world. Alongside Famine, who's the Blob, Death, who is Archangel, and an alternate Cable known as War, they all serve under Apocalypse and aim to protect him at all costs. Now known as Pestilence, this four-armed and four-legged version of Spider-Man is not one you want to get close to, especially when you learn about his poisonous fangs and his hunger for human bones. Check him out for yourself and let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 4, The Other. In the 2005-2006 storyline of the same title, we see Spider-Man begin a transformation to his wild side. Peter began having these strange symptoms and dreams of Uncle Ben and spiders. Thinking he might be dying, Peter threw himself more and more into his crime fighting, especially against the scientific vampire known as Morlin, as Morlin wreaked havoc by beating Spider-Man so badly that he ended up in the hospital, and also by smacking Mary Jane around, Peter got to the point where he just couldn't take it anymore and reached his limits. In 2006 Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number 3, we see Spider-Man pin Morlin down and kill him with a bite to the head. After what we all assume was Peter's death, we see Peter erupt from a cocoon with new powers and a newfound dedication to embracing his spider side that he refers to as the other. Even though he embraced his dark side for a while, he does eventually come back to his senses and becomes the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man once more. Number 3, Patton Parnell. Definitely one of the scariest looking Spider-Men, Patton Parnell has been described as a sociopathic version of Spider-Man who made the exact opposite decisions that Peter had. Growing up with an abusive uncle, Uncle Ted, Parnell was always a bit of a weird one as he found joy in experimenting on animals and perversely spying on his next door neighbor Sarah Jane. Like other Spider-Men, Patton was bit by a spider, however, his body's reaction to it was a little bit different. Instead of turning into a superhero, he actually gained the ability to turn into a spider-like monster and started to seek revenge on those who had treated him poorly, starting with his uncle. He eventually leads Sarah Jane to his house and reveals his new form to her, and needless to say, she was terrified and not at all impressed. And then after a bite to the neck, the next morning we see hundreds of baby spiders coming out of Sarah Jane's neck. 
Thankfully, Parnell doesn't stick around for too long, as just after three days of having his power, he's drained of all his life force by Morlin. Check out this twisted story in 2014's Edge of Spider-Verse number four. Number two, The Spider. Showcased in the Exile series, we're introduced to one of the darkest Spider-Men to date. On Earth-15, Peter Parker was a sociopathic mass murderer who was sentenced to 67 consecutive life sentences and merged with the Carnage symbiote before being recruited by the Timebreakers into the Weapon X team. Using none of his powers for good, the Spider joined the other members of the team to try to conquer the Earth instead of actually helping them, finding nothing but joy in killing and torturing. It took a blast from Firestar to end his reign of terror alongside the other Rebels. What makes this version of Spider-Man so terrifying is that he's one of the few Spideys who actually keeps the symbiote his entire career. With the symbiote's powers combined with Peter's evil rage, this puts the Spider at the same power level as Carnage at his strongest point, making him a truly frightening foe. Why not check him out for yourself in 2002's Exiles number 12 so you can see just how truly merciless this killer is. Number 1. Zombie Spider-Man Now, not a whole lot is known about Earth-2149 Peter Parker's life before the zombie apocalypse, but it's presumed that it was similar to his 616 counterpart. On his search for the Necronomicon, the presumed source of the zombie infection, Peter ends up getting bit by Colonel America, who is a zombie at the time, and becomes infected. With his mind still relatively human, he hurries home to try and get his Aunt May and Mary Jane to safety. However, with the virus spreading quickly through his body, he winds up killing and eating them both. Alongside the other superpowered zombies, they ate almost all life on Earth until they ate Galactus, which granted them all the powers of the Power Cosmic, which they used to travel the universe, eating other worlds in their endless search for more food. After 40 years of eating worlds, they finally returned to Earth, still hungry to find Reed Richards' dimensional portal so they could finally continue their quest. However, Spidey noticed that his hunger was completely gone. Regaining his sense of justice, Spidey alongside some other good zombies found themselves locked in a battle with the other zombie heroes, trying their very hardest to convince them that their hunger was also gone and they could become heroes once again. Now, there is a whole lot more to the story of Spider-Man and I could honestly talk about it for hours, this entire zombie universe is amazing. So if you're interested in hearing the rest of the Spidey's redemption story, why not let me know in the comments below and maybe we'll dedicate an entire video to it. If you want to read the story for yourself, why not check it out in Ultimate Fantastic Four number 22 and Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness number 1. Evil Power Rangers have become a staple of Power Rangers mythology. I mean, fans love them. Every Ranger team needs to battle an evil Ranger. And of course, over the years, there have been so many good ones. And that, my friends, is what we are going to talk about today. Hey everyone, what is up? Welcome to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Steve Raff. And today, we are going to be talking about the Top 10 Dark Power Rangers alternate versions. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and remember to subscribe to Top 10 Nerd so you never miss one nerdy video. Now, with all that being said, let's dive in. Number 10. The Ranger Sentries. The Ranger Sentries are one of the newer additions to this list, but in such a short time they have made a massive impression. I mean, they even made their way into the Power Rangers fighting game Battle for the Grid. But for those who don't know, the Ranger Sentries are from the Boom Studios comic series. They work for the villainous Lord Draken and are soldiers who are connected to the Morphin Grid with powers Draken stole from Rangers he killed. They look awesome and they have their own powerful weapons and were a key part of the Shattered Grid event and they helped Draken take over multiple worlds and kill tons of rangers and civilians. Number 9, A-Squad. I feel like A-Squad would be probably a bit higher on this list if they were in it more. They were mentioned a lot throughout the season, but they were only in it for like a couple of episodes. They were this famous team of rangers that were, you know, the best for, uh, in the SPD. Even better than the main rangers who of the series, who were the B-Squad. Well, turns out that they were actually just straight up evil and not as perfect as everyone thought. They also had some interesting outfits. Their helmets were, of course, from Power Rangers in Space, but the rest of them was a hybrid of like a ranger suit and also some high-tech military armor. It was actually really cool. I wish we could have learned more about them and had them in more episodes, but hey, they were still cool in the time they were given. And the story of the SPD's fabled A Squad turning out to be the villains was actually really, really interesting. Number eight. Rita Repulsa movie version. Let me just say, I love the 2017 Power Rangers movie. It honored the original series, but brought its own unique modern spin. Unfortunately, it didn't do as well as they were hoping, so the sequel got scrapped, and now we will never see those Rangers fight Tommy Oliver in the sequel like the after credits scene was teasing. But we did get to see them fight a Green Ranger, 
and that was of course Reed Repulsa. Yes, in this version, Rita was actually part of the original Ranger team that was led by Zordon. It was a cool twist, it added a really unique dynamic to the ranger Rita rivalry. She was the green ranger of that team and killed the other rangers, except Zordon, who was the red. He managed to get their power coins and hide them from her until they could find new rangers worthy of harnessing their power. Rita kept hers, and once she returns, she uses that coin. And we get to see her harness the green ranger power plus her own, and it was pretty awesome. It was cool to see how her suit adapted and got kind of corrupted. She was a great villain, and the ending set up her and her base on the moon. Elizabeth Banks did such a good job, and I would have loved to see where they would have taken her in the sequels. Number seven, Jason and Kimberly. I feel like some people might have forgotten about this one, but to this day, it's still one of the scariest Evil Ranger moments. I mean, they're deep, altered voices were just scary all on their own. But if you don't remember, let me jog your memory. Evil Jason and Kimberly didn't come from an episode or a comic book. It came from a movie, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie to be exact. Diva talks, kidnaps, and sacrifices them as a part of her plan to bring back Malagor. And the two of them come back as evil minions for him. They have enhanced strength, deep voices, as I mentioned, and red eyes. It makes for a truly terrifying combo. They fight the Turbo Rangers and actually do a ton of damage. Eventually, they were restored back to normal and all is well, but it was still so cool and terrifying to see them take on the Rangers like that. Plus, fans finally got to see Jason in a Power Rangers movie since he wasn't included in the Mighty Morphin movie, which was really sad. Number six, the Ranger Slayer. Like the Ranger Sentries, the Ranger Slayer comes from the comic series and is a new addition to the Power Rangers canon. The Ranger Slayer is actually Kimberly Hart, who was the original Pink Ranger from an alternate reality. But don't be fooled. She is not a good guy. Well, I mean at first. She was brainwashed into working for Draken and ended up killing other Power Rangers. Her story in that dimension was actually pretty similar to the original, at first. That is until Draken kills some of her teammates and her boyfriend, which makes her try to go and take on him herself. She has an altered suit and possesses the Bow of Darkness and became known as the Ranger Slayer. The Ranger Slayer is scary, deadly, and one of the coolest things to come out of Power Rangers comics. Number five, the Thunder Rangers. Man, let me start off by saying Power Rangers Ninja Storm is seriously one of the best seasons that they have ever done. They have great team, great suits, an awesome villain, and some of the best character development in any Power Rangers season. Plus, they also had two of the best evil rangers, Hunter and Blake, who are also known as the Crimson and Navy Thunder Rangers. They were tricked by Lothor, who was the main big bad of the season, into thinking the Wind Rangers were the bad guys and that they were responsible for their parents' death. They constantly got the upper hand on Shane, Tori, and Dustin, but in the end, realized the truth and eventually became their allies. Their journey was one of the highlights of the season as you understand why they were doing what they were doing. Throw in the fact that they had some of the coolest suits and moments of any evil rangers and it just makes for an amazing evil ranger. Number four, the White Dino Ranger. Trent Fernandez Mercer, AKA the White Dino Ranger. Trent was the adoptive son of the big bad of the season, Mezagog, also known as Tommy's former colleague and friend, Anton Mercer. Trent's real parents were archeologists who were killed while on a mission with Anton, so he decided to take him in. Trent eventually comes in contact with the white dino gem, which was created by Tommy and Anton, and turns into the White Ranger, which gives him one of the coolest Ranger suits ever. Like seriously, it, it's in the top five. The Dino Gem gives him super speed and the ability to camouflage. The gem was tampered with and ended up corrupting him, which is why he ended up going evil. Since before he found it, Trent was friends with Connor, Ethan, and Kira, and of course Tommy Oliver, who is now known as Dr. Tommy Oliver, since he earned a PhD in paleontology, which is something I never thought would happen. But I mean, in Power Rangers universe, I guess, you know, anything is possible. But back to Trent, he became one of the greatest evil rangers by not only besting the main three dino rangers but also tommy on multiple occasions who as everyone knows is one of the best like a lot of other evil rangers he ends up turning to the good side eventually but that does not take away from all the mayhem he caused before that point number three lord draken okay so this was tough because lord draken could have easily been number one and I mean, this just shows you how many good evil rangers there are. I mean, because of all the things he's done and the fact that he's brand new, which makes it even more impressive. He's Tommy Oliver from an alternate universe who, after being defeated by Jason, decided to stay evil and went back to Rita. His goal from then on was to not only destroy the rangers of his world, but every world. He created ranger sentries from the powers of the rangers he killed and technically he ultimately won by creating his own dimension. Although they ended up changing it, but Draken killed so many rangers and destroyed so many worlds that overall he did accomplish 
accomplish more than any evil ranger ever, and that's a massive achievement. Plus, Jason David Frank actually got to play him in live action for the Shattered Grid comic event trailer, which was very cool. Here's hoping we get to see Lord Draken officially show up in a Power Rangers film or TV show one day, because that would be so awesome. Number two, the Green Ranger. Okay, so I might get a little hate for this, maybe, since a lot of people would consider Tommy to be number one. Because yes, he is awesome. And he almost was number one. This was really hard. Tommy was the original evil ranger. He started the trend. The Green Ranger was so popular. I mean, everyone loved him. After he was gone, they got so many requests to bring him back that they did bring him back. He consistently defeated the rangers in battle. I mean, he even jumped into the Megazord and destroyed them in there. Something that no other villain did. And it didn't end there. He had even teleported into the command center and he destroyed it. He seriously injured Alpha and Zordon. The latter took a long time for them to fix. Once they found out that it was their friend Tommy, it caused even more of a rift because he knew everything about them. There would be no evil Power Rangers without Tommy. And he will always be remembered as one of the best. But now we head on to... Number one the Psycho Rangers. Now, like I said, I know a lot of people would put Tommy as number one, and rightfully so. But while Tommy started the trend of the Evil Rangers, the Psycho Rangers took that concept and ran with it. They were absolutely terrifying, and not only tormented one Ranger team, but two. They fought both the Space Rangers and the Lost Galaxy Rangers, where the Pink Psycho Ranger was technically responsible for the death of the Pink Lost Galaxy Ranger, Kendricks, which was the first time a Ranger had actually died in the show's history, which was a massive deal. They were so popular that the even ended up introducing a new Psycho Ranger in the comics, the Green Psycho Ranger, who was, you guessed it, also insanely evil, killing Rangers from the original Mighty Morphin team who went on a mission to the moon in the year 1969. Now, of course, that is during comic continuity and not TV show continuity, but regardless, they changed everything. I mean, they even returned in the new graphic novel, Power Rangers The Psychopath, which was also amazing. All right, there you have it, guys, the top 10 Dark Power Rangers alternate versions. What does your list look like? Let us know down in those comments below. And remember to subscribe to Top 10 Nerds so you always know whenever we post a new nerdy video just like this one.